Hello YouTube, Das Gregor here, and welcome to another Linux First Impressions. Today we're going to be looking at Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a Debian Wheezy distribution. It was built for penetration testing. It is out of Switzerland. Now, before anybody says, hey, I'm seeing a pattern here, this is only by coincidence that I have found two penetration testing Linux environments to look at in the last couple weeks. I found Matrix Linux yeah, maybe three or four weeks ago and said I really liked it and wanted to try it out. So that's why I did that a couple weeks ago. And then as I was looking through the distro watch, I found this one that looked like it was new, ready for a review. So without further ado, here we go. <laughs> Kali Linux, as I said, is a distribution used for penetration testing. It comes default with GNOME 3, but it's not that annoying, ugly GNOME 3 that I've grown to hate. Instead, this is a GNOME 3 that I kind of like. And I don't know why, but it has that familiar look to it that I really liked somewhere else with GNOME before it all went to pot. They have done an excellent job theming this distribution. I like their background here. I like the fact that they have kind of made it look more along the lines of GNOME 2.x. You still have your status bar up here with all your tasks. All your applications are down here. You've got your application menu, your places, your little shortcuts. It kind of feels like home again for, for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> but they have done a great job here, making it look more familiar. And everything else is just about it is very well polished. The installation of Kali Linux went very smoothly. It wasn't that difficult to get installed, download, configure, partition the hard drives. And another very big plus to this is that I'm running it in my new machine using the REFIND refined desktop manager or boot manager I should say I was able to install it in my third partition and refined was able to see it and allow me to boot to it so out of the box it was UEFI friendly and so far everything is working very well in it in fact I've talked to you guys about using HDA jack retask for the sound issues within the whole sound HDA Intel driver and in most cases I can make it work by taking care of it every time I reboot and doing it doing it again so that the sound is proper however with this distribution and I'm not sure what the differences are I noticed today that without having to use the HDA jack retask to make my sound proper in this environment that it was working proper so the boot which I know it says is beta to set it up at boot is actually working within Kali Linux so at this point in time I believe this is near a hundred percent operational inside my laptop with very little fuss very little muss this was a nice OS to look at let me tell you just from those perspectives now let's get into the heart of Kali Linux. As I stated, Kali Linux is a penetration testing environment. It comes with very minimal non-testing tools, but that's not a big issue because you can always use semantics to go ahead and install any applications you may want or need outside of it. So you could turn this into a very nice desktop for yourself, based of course upon stable Wheezy from Debian. If we take a quick look here at our applications, 
you will see, of course, the typical accessories. They do have the Arduino IDE. Now, that's quite interesting. I have played a little bit with the Arduino IDEs in the past. It's kind of a neat uh, developing environment for the Arduino uh, board. And I know Element 14 always talks about this. If any of you have ever watched Ben Heck or the Ben Heck show from Ben Heckendorn, he does some really awesome mods using the Arduino boards and shows you just what they're capable of. They're an inexpensive board that you can do a lot of cool stuff with. Now I threw on Tux Racer because I also wanted to make sure that I could verify that the video was working properly within this. And if we do a quick test, let me pull up a box here. If we do a, GLS, a GLX gears, you will see that we are getting some phenomenal frame rates. Now, I don't know how proper these are because in most of the other distributions, I've only been seeing about 60 frames per second, but we're getting a lot more frame rates here. Now, it could just be that they've done an excellent job configuring their kernel and tweaking it just to the right performance. But just to, as you can see there, those frame rates are great. And if I were to use the Tux Racer, which I, like I said, I, I installed to test, beautiful graphics. Now, for some strange reason, when I did try to test out Minecraft on here, I was lucky if I was getting about 9 to 10 frames per second. It was very clunky, and I'm still not sure what might be the issue there, because everything else is running beautiful within this distribution. And we move on. You'll notice in graphics, there's no GIMP. There's nothing real spectacular. You know, just a couple of viewers. It has some interesting things with the ham radio, if that is something you might be looking at. The internet, it came with Ice Weasel, which is a flavor of Firefox and a few other internet tools. Here's the biggie. Here's where you're going to be looking for if you're getting this for a penetration testing reason. They have excellent tool sets, much like the last couple penetration testing distros that I've looked at. Now, one thing I noticed when I first set up this is it automatically didn't, it didn't ask me to create a user. It wanted me to just go ahead and log in as root. Now, that's not always a good practice to log in as root. However, 99.9% .9 of all of these tools you're going to find in here are going to require root access and if you try to run any of them let's see if this top one will work you know you're going to get an error well this one actually gave me options to use it but a lot of them came back with errors and i thought oh that just blows this doesn't work and that's not the case the case is that when you're a user and there are certain functions that you try to do that are root for instance they don't even recognize the command you're giving because that command is in a bin directory that has root access only and so it doesn't see it and so what I found out was if you're gonna be using these tools here then you're gonna to want to make sure you're logging in as the root user and it does allow you to change the password for root so you can secure it it's it's just that you don't want to be doing this as your standard user you're gonna to want to make sure you're using these as root and I'm just going to briefly go through some of this about the information gathering all the way down to system services so that you can see the different tools that they have installed here. Now, once again, penetration testing is used for hacking, cracking, decoding for good reasons. Never for evil. Never for evil. <laughs> I don't want anybody out there to think that I am promoting the use of cracking and hacking. But there are many reasons why it is good to be able, for instance, to sniff out your own network to make sure that someone isn't getting into your systems. Or maybe you're wondering, where am all my packets going? You know, you're concerned about the fact that someone might be redirecting something or somebody else might be out there sniffing your packets. You know, sometimes, for instance, you've lost your password and or I should say maybe a user of yours a friend of yours 
has lost their password. They can't remember. I mean, I, I, being in the IT field for more than 20 years, I don't understand that because, well, granted, I've got a million trillion different passwords. There are some passwords you just shouldn't forget, like your Windows login password, your Linux login password, those sort of things. But these are the tools that can help you when you run into those kind of problems. You know, reverse engineering, stress testing your your LAN and voice over IP if you're using voice over IP. Many good tools to go through. Forensics, you know, if you're just dabbling, that sort of thing. It's always kind of interesting to look at. But there is a lot here to offer in a very good environment that really makes you feel comfortable. And as I said, the developers of Kali Linux have done an excellent job in, in just making their OS work with the hardware. Very impressive. Now, in Office, for instance, you'll see there's some viewers. No LibreOffice, no OpenOffice, no, no other types of, of word processing, Excel spread. Uh, Excel is Microsoft, but you get the hint. No spreadsheets, etc. They've got a few items within their programming area. Now inside of sound and video, I did install GUVC View, simple screen recorder. It did come with VLC and everything else that you see there, CD burning software. Your typical system administration type stuff and etc. etc. Everything else is pretty much standard. I've been looking at Kali for a few days, although I've had it installed on the system for well over, well, close to a, a full week. I think I put it on late last Friday after doing my last video review when I was looking for a different distribution to look at. It has been very nice, very stable. It's got a nice, good, clean feel to it. And I wanted to bring up just a few things, too. If you go to the web here, and of course, this is where I found it on DistroWatch and found it. It says Debian testing, but I haven't very. I was thinking it was Wheezy for some reason that I was on. Now, they've got some good images for the Raspberry Pi. They even have images for. Oh, let me bring it up here because my mind goes blank. Here are all their different custom images you can get. You can get this for VMware, which is really handy if you just want to run it in a virtual drive. You can also get this in things like a Chromebook image, in a Samsung Chromebook image, and in some of Android's systems, as well as, like I said, the Raspberry Pi. Very handy to be able to get those in those different images to be able to test things out. Another cool feature of Kali is you can create your own Kali desktop environment very easily from what you've installed by running these simple commands right here telling you just choose which desktop environment you want to set up and then you run this stuff and you can get that working now I left it in the default GNOME environment because I was actually quite happy with the way they set it up very comfortable to use very nice architecture another really cool feature of Kali Linux is the live build custom ISO and with this, this walks you through in their instructions here on building your own ISO with all the tools that you might want to install and set up. If you follow this here, you'll be able to set up your own build for just what you need. And I thought that was pretty cool. Now, I'm not one to make custom ISOs, although I was tempted to try this out. They do suggest, though, that in your environment that you're in a pre-existing Kali environment or, and this is why I was thinking that they were based off of Wheezy and, because I didn't pay too much more to, attention to that part when I was looking at things, but it does say that if you're using this, make sure you're using a live build in the 3.x branch which targets Debian Wheezy. Uh, but like I said, that's a pretty neat feature. They do have other um, downloads that you can go to here on their main page 
and for instance you can see there's a 64-bit download and torrent a mini ISO and that's of course for Kali Linux 64-bit there's a 32-bit version there is the AM APMEL downloads and of course the ARM architecture downloads so they have built this in many different environments that work very well it's very smooth very comfortable to use this would actually be a, a, a nice OS I think if you're looking for something slightly robust something that gives you a lot of great tools is stable and is using the latest gnome but in a way that I personally feel much more comfortable with yeah that I, I say that because I'm not a big gnome 3 fan don't like the direction they went but Kali has done an excellent job customizing it and making it a lot more to my liking so thank you for watching thank you all for your comments whether it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having I hope you enjoy it until next week, have a great one. Bye.